Hey, it's Justin with Seaboard Marine. In this video, we're finally gonna tackle aftercooler service for an aftercooler that's actually seen action. Been out in the water for three seasons. This is Tony's aftercooler from his boat. Uh, it's a QSB 6.7 uh, high output aftercooler, the pre-moda, the older style one. So there's a lot of these aftercoolers out there. Now the basic principles you're gonna see is, as far as how we disassemble, how we clean the aftercooler, we clean the salt water side with acid, we clean the air side with degreaser and hot water, and then uh, how we reassemble everything with grease. That's gonna apply to pretty much every aftercooler, even if it's not a Cummins aftercooler. So uh, the same basic principles apply. There may be a little different assembly method or a few different things to think about as far as marking it before you take it apart uh, and making sure it goes back together in the, in the same way that you took it apart. But the basic idea is pretty much the same. So hopefully this uh, video will help you guys understand how your after cooler needs to be cleaned and maintained and serviced and uh, will help you out. So now this isn't really going to dig into the uh, really uh, an after cooler that's been neglected. Uh, we do have a few tricks and and uh, ways that we can um, get a core out of an aftercooler that's really stuck and we got a few things like that. We'll probably do another video for uh, aftercoolers that are a little farther gone, but this one is just kind of a routine aftercooler service. So uh, enjoy the video. So what is this thing, Tony? 6.7550 aftercooler. Uh, it's been in service for about three years, but low hours. But I do keep it freshwater flushed, and uh, it's time to take it apart to see what's going on on the inside. Okay. So we've done nothing but started pulling this cap. Yeah, that's all we've started right there. Marked it. Oh, and marked. 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 And uh, so we'll see how see how, uh, how she looks. Freshwater flushing. Uh, three years, three years with freshwater flush. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, first signs don't look too bad. No, they look great. They look great. That's what freshwater flushing does. This thing's been wet for three years. Wet for three years. That's right. Only used in the ocean. This is in a Great Lakes boat. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. It doesn't taste salt, salty? No. Fresh? And that side looks pretty good too. Yeah, it's a little divider cap. A little bit of uh, little bit of detritus universe. in there. Right. Seaweed. Yep. Yeah. No rings came right off. And then this is the spacer on this side, right? I guess so. One on each side. Well, no, one's, one, one's, one of them stays on the after, yeah, one of them's part, part of the, the after cooler end cap. This, this, this is the one that's removable. Right. That's the one that's removable. Yep. Oh, that's popping it. right off. And it's aluminum too, but that's the beauty of grease. Yep. If you put this, leave this thing together, dry this thing, it'll come off in pieces. Grease and fresh water. Right. That's the key. Aluminum brass do not get along. That's the Alco Metal Lube and it's done a wonderful job. A wonderful job. So now, this thing should pop out that way, in theory. Let me get a rubber mallet here. Yeah. Not going with, with the bare hand. No. Let's move it. Hundred percent. Probably. I don't know if we have something big enough for to tap it with. To tap it through. Do we have a big enough pipe for this guy? I don't remember. Oh yeah. There she goes, I'll, man. Hold that and I'll pull it out. Yeah. <clears throat> Nope. Start to. Okay, let's do this. We have something to press us through there because we pressed them out. No, we don't have to press it through. We need to set it on something so we can come straight up on it, I think. Not very long. Almost there. Yeah. Here we go. Just a little That's three years in the ocean. 
Three years in ocean water, but fresh water flushed makes all the difference. Just like new. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad at all. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Tubes are pretty clean. Airside. Yeah. Airside's worse. Well, yeah, shoot it this way. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get it? Yeah, we got it. How'd you get it? Did just, it? just a little more brute force and awkward. elbow grease. Yeah, the air side looks worse than the water side. How's that possible? <laughs> it's uh, from... absolutely weird. That's because the air side is exposed to salt air, and the water side was that's, that's exactly exposed to right. fresh water. That's exactly right. But it's all cleanable. Put out with really no hammers to speak of. Yeah. So what are you going to do to clean this uh, core? Are you going to maybe gonna, a little bit of acid? I'm going to I'm going to fill it up with a ten to one for about ten minutes. And on the outside, I'm just going to spray with uh, a good degreaser and, and hot water and clean it and let it dry. That's the it. The inside will just be cleaned out with the inside here will just be cleaned with uh, WD-40 and a rag. That's it. And we'll put it back together. Okay. So we got attached our special bracket. Yeah, we found our plate. All right. We did have one after all. This is another ring that should be made out of plastic. Even though it's recent, it just holds up. It's still... Yeah, a little lighter. Yeah. Okay. All right. There you go. Plenty strong. Okay, so just degrease her? Yeah. I use WD-40 first to loosen up any of the salt deposits from the air or stuff like that. Just going to soak it with degreaser. Just keep it soaked with degreaser for a couple hours, right? Yeah, something Just kind of like let that. it sit in the sink? Let it sink, sit, and then I'll... And then we have our hot water blaster. Yeah, and that, that's all it needs. Plumbed into our hot water heat, or our, our regular water heater so we can blast it with hot water. Does a pretty had, good job. Had we not assembled, taken it apart when new and assembled it this way, we'd be throwing out this aftercooler. We'd never even get it apart without destroying it. Yeah. Yeah. He is servicing when they're new properly and then keep fresh water in when you're not using it. Okay, got a little bit of growth. It might be worth yeah, putting some acid I'll in there for a little take, bit. We're going to put acid there. Absolutely. Yeah. Kind of crazy. And then how'd you get that? How'd you get that so clean? Uh, just mineral spirits. Oh, mineral mineral spirits? A little so, solvent? If you notice right here, there's yep. a little bump. Yep. Okay. So that little bump has to line up with that. Yep. So if you don't index mark it and you get this out of sync, you probably either foul up that or put a big chinger in that. Right. So you can see the zinc in here is taking a pretty good hit on three years worth of Yep. Definitely. All right. So that's that's clean and ready to be reassembled there. Thick acid and water, full cool acid and water. Ten to one muriatic acid. Sorry, I cut you off a little bit. We got the fan blowing there for safety, so we're gonna breathe the crap. And we got it stacked with a weight, a donut weight on top, and uh, some uh, rubber and silicone pads on the bottom to seal it up, so we can fill it up. See, it's already bubbling. Oh yeah. Won't take long. There wasn't a lot of growth on there. Yeah. Fill it up, wait for it to stop bubbling, take a few minutes, and then rinse ten, it off ten real good. It'll be clean. Yeah. Get all the calcium out of it, any lime. Holds quite a bit, about a quart. Yeah. Okay, it's literally been only two minutes, and it's already done, totally done bubbling. Ceiling surfaces are. Yeah, it looks good. Even with brass sitting next to it, they're like, they're just a new little bit of, just the slightest mount right there, but nothing bad. Nothing bad at all for three years in water. That's not bad at all. Yeah. And, uh, Easily get really nice. Get another three years easy out of this. Oh, yeah. No, we'll get more and more. beyond. We'll get beyond. If you, do, if you take it, don't wait, and don't wait three years next time. Do it every two years. What do we do on the caps here? You already got them clean. What'd you clean them with? I just wiped them out. And then ran the, ran the bottoms on the wire brush. Yeah. Go ahead and pull out that zinc. Yeah, go ahead Take and a picture back of over that. So I can hold down on it. Yeah, okay. It. 
never changed the zinc, but that's because it's in fresh water. You don't need to. Right. Still a lot of zinc left. A lot of zinc left. So you clean this with just the wire wheel, or? No, I just wiped it out. Oh, I just, just wiped it out? I just cleaned the rector seal off. Oh, you cleaned that off with the wire wheel. Okay. No, that's fine. It wasn't dirty. Yeah, it didn't take much. This is how we prepare a zinc. Always. The blue rector seal is nice because it's real gummy. Yeah. But even the yellow is, gets hard enough to keep it from oh, yeah. coming off. And, and it makes for a better contact. The contract won't degrade. Come on. Mm, I think you got the wrong cap. I didn't know that. I learned too. How tight do you make? Just a tiny bit beyond hand tight, right? Yeah. Real easy to break them. That's pretty good, right there. The key though, the biggest key to the zig is put it in with pipe dope. So you get a good contact and it doesn't leak. People think that putting an insulation there or putting sealant there is going to make it not connect. It's actually the opposite. It makes for a better connection. So we chase the threads, the zinc threads, with a half-inch pipe tap. Right. You can also jam the wire, one of these little toothbrush-sized wire brushes. They jam in there. The worn-out one actually works be almost works better. You can or, jam it in. Or the, or the ones that work on uh, the plastic handles. They're smaller. These guys. Yeah, those work good too. If you get a big one for half-inch pipe. It'll yeah, that's what you it'll need. fill the whole thing. Right. Yeah, let's see here. I'll put a little bit of this in there. Just a little bit. A little bit of muriatic acid just mm -hmm. to dissolve some of that stuff? Yeah, see. This guy here. Done. Now we're going to neutralize this. And it's going to start foaming away. So you put a chunk of soda ash right there? Right. the acid and you want to dilute this you want to dilute the uh, oh, yeah. dilution is the solution they say in chemistry that's it if you dilute it enough I mean even soda has acid in it uh, even coca-cola al coca-cola yeah, has yeah. coca-cola has acid in it Okay, rinse it real good. Blast off the foam. That's been soaking with degreaser since we started. Right. Blast that off really good. Yellow rector seal fire tight. But, uh... So that's it now. That's it. Rector's caps are clean, new zinc. Um, every, the housing's clean and ready to go. We're basically now just waiting for the, um, the core, the core to, to dry. Basically, it's, it's done. It's dr it just needs to dry off. Yeah, so the fins are just full of water. Yeah, they that's are. One of the tough, that's one of the tough things is to get all the water out. Even with air, it's kind of yeah. tough. Want to use a hot water blaster? Yeah. I turned it over. I still saw some dirty water. Yeah. It takes a while to get all the water out of there. You want to get it pretty dry, though. Good that grease holds up. That's grease from the first assembly. From last time, yeah. From the first assembly. Okay. Dry enough? Yeah, it's dry. Grease it up. A little bit inside the where the core goes. Yep. All over the face, all over the O-ring bevel.
I take WD-40 inside the housing itself, just a light coating of it. A little WD-40 inside there, yeah. just... Yeah, you can see the wetness in there. So it helps it slide? Yeah, that, and keeps any, if there's any moisture in there for the time being, it kind of helps it protect it. So you've actually seen corrosion inside, inside on a brand new after cooler. On a brand new after cooler. I think I got some pictures of one that uh, blew me away. Making sure this thing's nice and clean before we put it together. Okay, the Could notch is where? Well, obviously. The it's notch, be, yeah, that's, that's right. That's the end that has to go in. And where's our other plastic? Oh, there it is. Plastic yeah. pieces are. It's still on the end of the. Okay, say it again. Notice this little locating pin here. And that pin. Good. It's going to line right up with there. that notch. And so this thing only goes in from one side. It comes out on one side. 7 O-ring kit. The other ones, in a pinch, I wouldn't have a problem using them. They feel good. They're not too flat, but they're cheap enough to buy new ones. Yeah. Okay, so first O-ring goes on right here. You're going... Watch it, okay. Put that guy down. It's a little tricky to get down there. Okay. A little more grease on there? Yeah. I'll let him brush it once and he'll slide her in. Yeah, this is my manual condensation drain. Manual condensation drain, so right. you can just open it up. Open it up. Once in a while. Yeah, with the engine running, it'll blow anything out of it. Gravity, it'll you can open it up even with the engine off, right? Because oh, yeah. it'll it'll just drain. Uh, this is ready to slide in. Yeah, good. The other yeah. one's got grease on it. Yep. Uh, You may, you know, one trick, sometimes you take the gray wheel, the burning wheel to those yeah. ribs, but slid right in. The pin goes right there. Yep. It was right there. Here's the pin. And we put a, we have an O-ring on it, right? On the inside there. On the one. inside. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now we need another O-ring on the outside. There's a notch on that. Yeah. I don't understand. We want it to orientate it right because of this thing, for one reason. It's a, it's a, it's a two-flow. Right, back in. Okay. Ring here. Okay. Some more grease. This is probably the most important side because of the aluminum spacer. Right. If that spacer was made out of plastic, it probably wouldn't be quite as critical, but because it's aluminum, you got to really make sure that there's no brass to aluminum contact, or this thing will never come off. Would never come off. And it's it's got a mystery hole in there. It's got a mystery hole that doesn't work, of course. <laughs> well, we think maybe it's to keep <clears throat> it's designed an air from no, air from it's designed to show a breach of that O-ring, the water to go in here and have an external leak. Yeah. But it doesn't work because the second salt water is going to get to this aluminum, it's going to corrode up anyway. Oh, I see, because it would leak so It would leak out between the cap and the... Right. Yeah, right. okay. That's a crock, I see. So that's a, yeah. The whole thing's a crock of shit as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, how can it leak out the cap? Because from there to there, this, this other seal's on this side, between this side and the cap. So it would... Oh, so it, it, yeah. This is a... Between the two metals. A, yeah, it would leak to the outside. This is strictly a couch engineer's dream that would never work. Never work. Grease between every layer. Every, especially on this side where the aluminum is. So 
See, we did this three, four years ago. And I put the boat in the water. We took it apart when it was new. And that's the only reason we, can, we salvaged it, because it would have never come apart uh, if we hadn't done that. It would have just been one big crew. Yeah, it's cast. night and day. And the freshwater flushing, too. And, and it'd be a you know $4,000 movie later. Okay, so now let's get our caps here. So it looks like both caps are identical, so you could put them either one which way, but we marked them anyway, so. Okay, so there's one. Here's your plastic piece. Yeah, so it's, the water makes three passes through the aftercooler core because it comes in through one side, goes across, and because these are offset, it, that creates a strip of tubes down the middle, so it comes through, goes around, and then snakes around the third side and then out through the cap. Okay, there's our dividers. Okay, so we think the water comes in on which side? We're gonna grease that up. Oh yeah. I would put a little grease on that. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna put grease on everything. Always make sure you grease up the bolts too. Absolutely. If these were really funky, I'd wire brush them, but they're not bad. But they got grease on them left over, which is good. Okay, we got it all greased up. There's our index marks. Let me get a bolt to hold this thing on here. And then we're gonna put them in just snug, just to compress the, How many what we're doing? Meters? We're doing an alternate, alternating pattern here. Put them in. So first just put them in snug, I, uh, I just do, to get the thing seated. I know what a Newton meter is. It's two thirds of a, of a foot pound. Then you tighten them till they strip and then back it off a little bit? Yeah, that's it. Tighten it till it strips. <laughs> you sure on that one, huh? Where it goes? Okay. okay. Caps all greased. Got the Caps fresh sink installed. Okay, there's our index marks right there. Index notch, which is right in there. The same thing. We're just going to... Snug them up. Snug it up. We get both sides snug. Make sure everything's settled in there before we torque anything see, down. And then we will tighten this guy first. Tighten this end first because it's got the captive rim on the, the on the. Rim, that's right. Now, one thing we don't want to do is put this together with an impact wrench, right? No, no. I mean, I I wouldn't mind doing it with a like a real low torque one just to get it started. A little one. Yeah, but uh, I'm comfortable with with T handle wrenches. Yeah, it's better just to do it by hand because yeah. we have seen we have seen people strip strip these. Absolutely. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Okay, they're all kind of seated. So I'm going to go around with it here. And these things don't need to be torqued to the... No. Out the if wazoo, I would use right? a foot-pound measurement, I'd say 10 foot-pounds, if you were going to do it with that. I'd have to look up the bolt torque. If you use just a small wrench... aluminum... Just use a small regular wrench or, or like a T-handle like this and just go nice and put a little muscle on it, but nothing crazy. You don't need any, you don't need a, a long wrench or a big ratchet. No. It's just seating now. I can feel, I saw it squash a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now I can kind of go around in a circle. Okay, it's, it's basically seated, but not tight. So it's as, it's, it's as far as it's going to go, as far as that goes. And if I was going to tighten these, I'd just go around like this. You can't really get them too tight with a wrench like this. Right. That's the nice thing about using a wrench like that. Right. Probably not even with a small, cheap, regular wrench either. Okay, one. Totally comfortable with that. Okay, and then we'll, we'll t tighten up the bolts on the other side the same way, same and that—that's how you service a 
QSB 6.7, high output or older style derated after cooler. Not the slim line. Okay, I'm seating him right now. There's one. Okay, anything in conclusion? Uh, yeah, we want to make sure we didn't leave an O-ring out. I don't. I had four, <laughs> they're all gone. That's important. <laughs> and uh, other than that, it looks really good. I'm comfortable with it. Let's take it back on my boat and uh, service it again in two years, not three. And by the way, you should do this to an aftercooler, brand new aftercooler. When it's new. Minus the cleaning, but put it together with the grease the same way. Right. And, uh, and then if you freshwater flush, two years is good. If you don't freshwater flush, you better do it every year or more. Okay.